All right, welcome back to the channel, my friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're going to be breaking down the Scions of Macry, the new Battle Force box set upcoming for Ultramarines. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. All right, so we have the brand new box coming out, the Scions of Macrog. And if you are an Ultramarines player or looking to be an Ultramarines player, this may be the box for you. So let's take a look inside. All right, so here we have the full contents of the box set. You're going to get first and foremost your leader of the army, Marnius Calgar. And he does include two honor guard as well. And then we have Tigerius, Chief Librarian, a very powerful character. And then we see three Blade Guard veterans, 10 Hellblasters, and 10 Intercessors as well. A pretty nice core starting force right off the bat. Uh, let's go ahead and break down the points first, and then let's break down the price and value as well. And then finally, I'll give some suggestions as to what I think would be a nice way to expand this force. All right, so here we had the points breakdown for everything. First off, we have Marnius Calgar. Uh, so he is going to be your leader. He is very, very powerful. He's essentially like a light version of Gulliman. He's not quite as strong as Gulliman is, but essentially does the same thing, just a little bit weaker. So he's going to give you two free command points right off the bat. He has double power fist, so he hits really hard in combat. He has the ability to give one character or core unit in the command phase, reroll all hits. And then he also gives everybody core or character within six inches reroll ones to hit. And then finally, he has a warlord trait also that every time you spend a command point, you can roll a dice and on a five up, you get your command point back. Obviously max out still at one per battle round. So he is very strong, can do a lot of damage on his own. He's also a very strong supporting character as well. And at 180 points, he's an absolute steal. You definitely want him in your army, especially if you don't have Gulliman possibly still if you have Gulliman. Uh, so moving on from there, we have our two Honor Guard. So that's his buddies that come with him in the box set. So 60 points for the Honor Guard. They are a separate choice. Uh, they are super durable. It's nice because there's only two of them in the unit and the unit's only 60 points. So you can move them where you need them to be. They provide extra protection around your characters. They have durability with invulnerable saves as well as good armor saves. Uh, and they can do some damage if need be. Nice little supporting characters. And next we have Chief Librarian Tigurius. Uh, so he is a very, very strong caster. One of the better Space Marine psychers in the game. Uh, he has quite a bit of buffs that he can use. Uh, he has some benefits to him right off the bat. First and foremost, he can pick a unit in the command phase within six inches, either core or character, and give them minus one to hit. Uh, so very, very strong. Obviously, it's minus one to be hit by your opponent when being shot at. Uh, so he essentially gives one of your units, maybe in this case your Hellblasters, uh, minus one to be hit, making them much more durable. Uh, he also has a bunch of awesome psychic powers. He has some cool offensive psychic powers you can take, but honestly, the defensive psychic powers are really good as well. Uh, so there's some various buffs that you can have for units in the army. So he has quite a bit of choice when it comes to the psychic powers, and he is a strong psyker. I think Null Zone is basically an auto-take. It essentially allows you to shut off invulnerable saves within six inches of him. So if something big and threatening come towards you, you can essentially use Tigerius to take away its invulnerable save and then just unleash on it with the rest of your army. There's a lot of other cool offensive powers as well, but I think most of the buffing powers are actually better. There's some that buff your offenses, some that buff your defenses, and then some that just straight up do mortal wounds, etc. So you do have quite a bit of versatility with Tigerius. Uh, he is very, very strong. And honestly, for his points of 135, uh, I definitely think he's worth it. He's okay in melee if you need him to be, but honestly, that is not where you want him at. You want him buffing your units, staying back, and using psychic powers. Uh, but again, he's very strong and an auto-include for Ultramarines. So we're off to a pretty good start, honestly. Uh, next, we have the Blade Guard Veterans. So you're going to get three of the Blade Guard. They are similar to the Honor Guard. They're not quite as good. They're still equipped with a little bit of combat potential. They have their invulnerable saves from their shields. They're one of your more durable units. I think they're an excellent choice for just about any army, especially depending on what happens with Armor of Contempt. Because here's the thing. The Armor of Contempt made all Space Marines much better because it gave them the additional like negating minus one uh, from the AP of their opponent's attacks. 
The problem with the Blade Guard, and in this case the Honor Guard as well, is they don't get that benefit because they're already armed with the shield. So the shield gives them the invulnerable save, the shield gives them plus one to their armor save, which is essentially the equivalence of the negating minus one from the AP. So the truth is they actually didn't get better when Armor of Contempt came out because they didn't really benefit from it. So if Armor of Contempt goes away, they'll actually get better. Because essentially they will get back their benefit or if there are changes to it. So we don't know exactly what's going to happen. We don't know how points are going to change. So, you know, pre the new stuff coming out and new points, new rules, etc. The Blade Guard are very good. It's possible that they get even better. And for 105 points, you just honestly can't beat it. And then next we have Intercessors. So for your Intercessors, you're going to get 10. You can build them into one 10-man squad or two 5-man squads. You can give them something like a Thunder Hammer, Power Fist, Power Sword. You can give them a Grenade Launcher, various different guns as well. Depending on how you do it, and if you break them up into two five-man squads, uh, you can get them somewhere in between 200 points with no upgrades or 260 points if you like completely max them out. You're probably going to fall somewhere in the middle. Uh, it's nice to have a combat weapon in your Intercessors, but again, you don't want to spend a ton of points on them because uh, they are kind of like your chaff in this army. Uh, and then finally we have the Howl Blasters. So Howl Blasters are like 350 points for 10. They have three different ways you can build them uh, with various awesome plasmas, just depending on whether you want more shots or to hit harder. And then there's like an in-between one as well. Howl Blasters are really good. And honestly, they're 350 points, which is a lot, but they really do dish out a lot of damage, especially if you go up against something that has like heavy infantry or light vehicles, which is basically their specialty. So when it's all said and done, we total this up. It essentially comes out to about 1030 to 1100. So about a thousand points, a little bit over. Depending on what you were going to take in the army, you could easily trim it down to a thousand points and make that work. I do like this overall. I think it's a nice setup. You have some nice shooting from the Hell Blasters, although they lack super heavy damage or like long range damage potentially. You have strong combat potential with Marnius Kalgar, the Honor Guard, and the Blade Guard. You have the ability to buff essentially like the majority of the army with either Marnius or Tigerius as well. And then on top of that, you have a nice little core with your Intercessors. So when it's all said and done, I think composition, this army is pretty nice. And if I was going to be starting Ultramarines, this is a really, really good start to it. Now, there are a couple things that I would personally like different, but... Some of that is personal preference and some of that is, you know, effectiveness. So we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Let's go ahead and take a look at the value in this box set. Now that we know it's good composition and you're going to use everything right out of the gates, let's take a look at how much money we could save. All right, so we have Marnius Kalgar and the Honor Guard come together in a single box for $60. We have Tigerius for $42 on his own. We have three Blade Guard is $55. 10 Intercessors is $60, and 10 Hellblasters is $60 as well. Now, not listed on here, but included in the box set are the decals and upgrade frames. Now, Games Workshop did not specifically tell us how many upgrade frames come in the sets. For some of these Space Marine box sets, it doesn't even really make sense to have any upgrade frames. For other ones like this, you could easily have two sets of the upgrade frames. So I'm not sure exactly what route they're going to go with these upgrades. Uh, the Ultramains have a Primaris upgrade sprue, which is $16.50 and includes six regular shoulder pads with the Ultramain symbol, some little accessories, heads, weapons, and then three of the like aggressor or blade guard style, like larger shoulder pads. So assuming that we only get, let's say, two of these in the set, You'll have enough to give all your intercessors or all your hell blasters the bonuses you'll have a couple extra bits around uh, as well but it won't be enough i don't know if they're going to put four in the set which is what you would need to give all of your intercessors and hell blasters those shoulder pads so i'm really not sure exactly where to price that at i went ahead and just threw in roughly 30 bucks in the price uh, just to kind of account for a couple of those sprues. It's possible this will be a slightly better value if it has more than two of those upgrade sprues. It's also possible it would be worse if there's only one of those in there. Uh, but just to kind of keep it roughly around that level, we're going to say the MSRP is about $300. The estimated retail price is $210, the same as our recent Battle Force boxes for the Space Marines. And that's going to give us a total of like 31% savings. 
So overall, 31% off is a good deal, especially if you have access to an additional discount uh, of 15% or so off. When it's all said and done, you're going to come in at about 50% off buying the individual kits at full price. So this honestly is a great deal and it's great composition. I think this is an amazing starting point for any Ultramarines player. Uh, if you don't have anything at all, this is a great place to jump off at. If you already have a couple of basic units, it's probably not going to be bad for you as long as you don't already have the characters. And now a quick message from this week's sponsor. This video is sponsored by CMOGames.com where you can get 15% off most Games Workshop pre-orders and they go live right at midnight Saturday mornings. CMOGames.com offers free shipping on orders over $25 in the US 48 and most orders ship within 24 hours. CMOGames.com has been selling Games Workshop products online for more than 20 years and customer service is their top priority. CMOGames.com carries the full line of Games Workshop products including 40k, Age of Sigmar, Kill Team, Warcry, Paints, Hobbies, and Tools. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description below so they know you heard about CMOGames.com from Warhammer Man Studios. Now, back to the video. So what would I think would be a nice addition to this uh, to upgrade it further or some potential changes? Well, right off the bat, obviously, I think Gulliman is very strong. Uh, he's not as good as he was when he first came out. He's been through a series of nerfs. And honestly, the game has gotten a little bit more powerful in that time. So he's not necessarily amazing, but he's still really good. He is a total powerhouse and a staple for the army. So regardless if you have Marnius Calgar or not, I think you're going to want Goleman. Maybe you don't take both of them in every game, but in smaller games, maybe you want to take Marnius. In larger games, maybe you want to take Goleman. I definitely would pick up Goleman. He is awesome. Uh, next from there, I would potentially look at some more of the elite units. I think probably another unit of Blade Guard would be nice, either to run as a separate unit or to make your Blade Guard unit into six. So that way when you buff them with, say, minus one to be hit or something like that, uh, it affects six models instead of three. So that is strong. Or if you give them the re-rolls, etc. Uh, so I think Blade Guard are nice. Uh, anytime you can take Eradicators or Aggressors, that's always nice as well. The problem with the Ultramarines is they kind of got nerfed. They had some cool abilities that went in line with like their chapter tactics. And when they changed units like Aggressors and some of the others, it kind of hurt them. They have the ability to fall back and still shoot, which is okay. It's honestly a nice ability, but it doesn't necessarily like combo amazing with anything. Also, they have buffs to leadership and the ability to move and count as if they didn't for shooting. So if you have like heavy weapon squads or something like that, you're still able to move without suffering the minus one for your infantry. So not bad overall, but nothing particularly amazing like combo wise for units. As always, I think something that you should put in every Space Marine army is a chaplain on bike. Uh, he is really quick, gets where he needs to be, and does a great job buffing your army. So that is definitely a plus. I would always say a chaplain on bike should be in every army. After that, there's lots of potential. If you have a bunch of troops like this, it's nice to have an apothecary. Maybe upgrade him to a chief apothecary so you can heal your units or even bring people back from the dead. That is always nice. And then maybe you want to go with something like a hard-hitting fast unit. Um, or potentially a hard-hitting shooting like range unit. And the truth is right now, the Primaris range is kind of lacking on both those fronts. If you're going to stick to strictly Primaris, it's not going to be as easy. Maybe wait on the new heavy support unit being released shortly, the one we saw previewed recently, or possibly even like some jump assault troops as well. Uh, but if you don't mind having some Firstborn Marines in your list as well, or maybe you already have some of those. Uh, Vanguard Veterans are a really nice selection. They're fast, they have tons of weapon options, and they can hit very, very hard. You can also use some of your buffs on them as well. And then and then possibly a Devastator Squad will be something nice as well. A bunch of LAS Cannons or something with strong range, even Missile Launchers is going to be good in your army. Um, potentially you could fill that same role though switching to vehicles instead so maybe start looking at something like a redemptor dreadnought or possibly one of the big tanks you could go with an executioner possibly a predator or something like that there's always some nice choices with the gladiator tanks as well so i've got to say this list is a really good starting point. It's a great value at the 30 plus percent off and definitely allows you to kind of go in any direction with these. Uh, I'm not sure I would necessarily have picked 10 Hellblasters myself just because they're 350 points and that is definitely a lot 
you could essentially get like two gladiators for around the same amount of points or two small vanguard veteran squads um, there's a lot of other options you could put in for 350 points but the truth is you have the ability to make them durable and they can dish out a lot of damage so your opponent really is going to have to deal with them so by forcing them to kind of come with you and deal with them or shoot from afar that can essentially upset your opponent's game plan sam i also like that they have a decent combat threat in the army as well and includes some key characters that you're going to want regardless so no matter which direction you go with this if you end up picking up Goleman, if you put in some vehicles some dreadnoughts or tanks or whether you just go more buffing the infantry i think you're going to end up with a nice army and with the new point change coming out and our potential rules changes as well we may see ultramarines or space marines in general uh, being a little more fun to play and hopefully at least a little bit more competitive so I think this is an excellent box. I would recommend it for anyone that's interested in Ultramarines. If you're interested in Space Marines, just in general though, I'm not sure this is the best box for you as it does come with two dedicated Ultramarine characters and then also the Honor Guard are included in there as well. And that's going to eat up a lot of the savings. So while they're really cool models and they're great, if you're not going to be playing Ultramarines, this box is probably not the way to go. And that doesn't even take into account the extra sprues and upgrades that are Ultramarine specific as well. Sort of like wrapping up the thoughts on this box. I think it's probably the best of the Space Marine boxes we saw. It's a nice value. It has a solid selection and not too much redundancy. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. If you are an Ultramarines player and I left out some key units, uh, please leave them down below. Uh, if you have some cool combos or some essential units that you need to have, I uh, always like to hear from you guys. If this is your dedicated primary army, you're probably going to be a little more in touch uh, with what is best in the meta or what you wouldn't leave home without. Let me know your opinion on Goleman versus Marnius Kalgar as well, um, as I think a lot of people will probably have to make that decision. So that's it for today. Special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring this video. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment below. And uh, that's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.